cream, so it's just so I want to cut it a little bit. All right. So this is a little crazy. I mean, but uh, you know, this is Sundance. What, you guys are like Sundance guys now. I mean, I, I became a fan, you know, through the Awesome Show and stuff. But you guys had a movie last year. You had you're in, you know two movies this year. One that you directed. Like, yeah. what is it about the film festival that you know you draw you? Sundance has changed. We haven't. Mm-hmm. They're just uh, open to what we are trying to do. Yeah. So I don't think we've sort of catered our work towards this this community at all. No, no, no. <laughs> are you guys like are you fans of the festival beforehand or? Close personal friends with Robert. So uh huh. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. And uh, now, like I said, I'm big fans of you guys, and a lot of times people are like, I'll be like, you gotta watch Tim and Eric, and they're like, well, what's it like? And I always struggle. I'm like, I don't know exactly what it's like. How do you guys describe your humor? I think um, at some point, I hope very soon that the term Tim and Eric would just become a way to describe our work. Mm-hmm. So people would say it's very much like Tim and Eric. Yeah. Because that's sort of yeah. what it is like. <laughs> and I so would hopefully enough people it, will know that. It's like your dreams after you've eaten too close to bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waking nightmare. It's a very right. vivid. Yeah. Not, a, not necessarily a nightmare. Sorry. Just very vivid. Right. Right. Although it can, be a nightmare. it can be a nightmare. Where did I... But where did it uh, where did it develop from then? I mean, like, what were you sort of uh, growing up your com- your comedy influences that sort of uh, you know brought this sort of you know madcap you know absurdist sort of humor out? You know, the influences thing is hard to say. It's all over the place. It's into you know crazy weird movies, public access, yeah. local commercials, you know, deep, uh, VHS tapes that got passed around, and, and then. Traditional shit like you know, Will's on the mind, Saturday Night Live, you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. So it's all over. It's all over the place, sure. It's also from Eric and I spending years living in, you know, in a house together and goofing around and making little movies and just making each other laugh. Yeah, sure. Now uh, you finished the uh, the last season, of the awesome show, or we hope it's in the la- last season. But when does the idea to do a movie take play uh, happen, and uh, where did the idea for the movie come from? We um, well, we made fifty episodes of the awesome show. Yeah. But then we made a, a couple short films for Funny or Die. On yeah. HBO, and they're fifteen to twenty minute shorts, and we're, we're like, oh, this is a, a new thing for us. You know, we've always wanted to make a movie, we sort of got into television like, as, as a happy accident. So it was a perfect time to um, make something using mm-hmm. all the kind of aesthetics that we've had in all of our previous shows. And yeah. Monster. And where did the billion dollar movie idea specifically, was that just... It's, it's sort of making fun, you know, we've lived in Hollywood for seven or eight years. We, we wanted to make fun of the idea of, of you know, Avatar thing, of how much money can put into a movie and just the way of all of that kind of uh, yeah. Now, Will, and, um, what is it like? I mean, Tim and Eric, obviously, I mean, they have them and they have this awesome, like, sort of, you know, like, repertory of characters. What's it like being part of, like, their, like, uh, you know. Uh... It's, it's really fun. I mean, it's. it's uh, it, first of all, it's, it, it is uh, an awesome compliment to, to be working with them because I love their stuff so much that. It's just nice to, to feel wanted by people you you really really admire and respect, uh, and it's and it just on a work level it's just it's always so much fun, it's so liberating every time you get to do stuff with them. You're, you really get to just they, they kind of let you just go to town on yourself. <laughs> it's, it's like a weird acting. Uh, uh, Fantasy. <laughs> they let me bear out. There's, there, there's a very short list of comedians that work. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, it's not the top, but he's on the list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close to the top. <laughs> um, and, and when, were you, you don't have a top. We just have like a round. The list, They're all there. The list, the list starts from the middle. Though. Yeah. <laughs> And when you first read the script for a billion dollar movie, what were your reactions to it? I could not have read the script. I cannot make this. <laughs> the Bishopman character needs to be here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it was it was so much fun to read it and just go, oh my God. We're, they're going to make 
I mean, in the in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. But, but like that's kind of when you're watching it, you can't believe some of the stuff that you're seeing. Yeah. And it's that's that's what I love about their show. That's what I, uh, I love about the movie. It's it's it just bonkers. Yeah, for sure. And that to me is the highest order of compliment. Is the, the, the kind of bonkers that it is. It's always it's really. It's a bonkers kind of bonkers. M- maybe that's the word to use. It's just bonkers. You know, maybe that's it. Um, now the movie is, is it's interesting. Like you know, we're, um, I have no framing. This is the worst video of all time. Um, it, I mean, it hits demand on demand while we're still at Sundance. A lot of people. Then it comes out in March. What do you guys think um, about that new method of distribution? I mean, because this is your first feature length movie. You're going on demand first. So this is sort of a new thing. What, what are your thoughts about that? At first, we were pretty uh, you know, reluctant to accept it because we made this movie for the big screen and theaters, yeah. and then we realized that the, the movie's coming out, I think, it's in 24 cities. So everyone that's not close to one of these cities, now they can watch it on demand and iTunes. And, um, yeah. And so it's going to get to a lot, of, a lot more people this way. Yeah, yeah. It's a brave new world. You know, it's, it's, this is the future, and it's kind of it's like scary. Yeah. But it's... Uh, it's the way it's going, and I think more and more people have great entertainment systems at home that are, you know, kind of like going to see it in, a, in some of these small movie theaters. It's not that much different. Yeah, you know? I mean, well, watching it last night, I was—I like, can't imagine seeing it at home. Just w- w- that was the way it was supposed to play it's with the audience with and the audience. like, yeah, yeah, and and all the titles the and stuff. There. <laughs> well, that, that that helps. That helps too. You know, you guys come down and all that stuff. Um, now, um, we're encouraging people to see it in the theaters if that's, if that's if possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't, have friends over. Make it a night. Yeah. Did, did you... This place is the worst. Yeah, I know, right? This is going to be... There's people getting, like, lotion applications over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're giving out free boots to Frank Langella next door, which is a madhouse. Um, did your directing style change? And this is, I guess, Will can jump in here, too. Uh, for TV versus uh, movie, I mean, TV, I guess, generally, you think... That you shoot faster uh, in a movie, you have you have more money. It's the opposite. Like okay. We're on a major time constraints, and Tim and I were in front of the camera ninety percent of the time. Yeah. So we had to trust our team to make sure we got the takes and to move on, and to, you know we had to go by the script a lot more. Than yeah. But we shot it more cinematically than we ever shot anything before. Where our DP Rachel Morrison is, you know, really. She did the Terry's, and she's really, you know, she's a very artistically minded DP. So, you know, we shot on a good camera. And we, sh- we we tried to make it. We didn't want the we didn't want the joke to be that the movie looked like crap unless it meant unless it was specific, like the commercials. Sure, movie. sure. You know, we wanted you to just kind of get lost in the, in, the, in the jokes and the story, and not make a specifically crappy looking movie. And I guess the, the, your directing style seemed exactly the same it, from the actor's standpoint, yeah, from the actor's except standpoint. for they wore berets. Yeah. Right, right. And had terrible teeth. Well, you weren't in those scenes. But, um, now, with comedy, I assume, especially you guys, your style of comedy, it, uh, you know, you, you, you probably, you know, do a lot of improv and stuff, and you have a lot of extra takes and a lot of different scenes. What was the longest assembly of this movie? Was there like a you know, super... Yeah. Um, and like that's the, the hardest you know hardest two and a half hours of your life because you're watching <laughs> this movie that's like you know whenever you watch a real early rough cut the first reaction is well this is just a disaster yeah. <laughs> this is not going to work right right but then you just start working at it and it gets, it gets good so and I mean in a lot of your comedy especially an awesome show when you have a lot of time to use is, uh, is derived from the editing like I, I mean obviously you cut it down to like from two and a half hours to this how much time did you spend in post and like without with I mean and also you said you wanted the movie to look better without having the crutch of like you know be able to like quick edits and stuff all the time was that like was it difficult what was it, what was that like we paced it out differently like for yeah. example the first shot in the movie Jeff Goldblum is on a loop hi hi yeah 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 so we wanted, we wanted to keep that kind of energy but we also wanted to pace it out like a you know a narrative movie that you, you can't have that at all time yeah, yeah. So we had the commercials in there that are like from the awesome show and some kind of uh, weird edit tricks, but uh, yeah. for the most part, it's a different experience. We wanted to use that aesthetic as jokes, not as the way the movie was cut. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, now you've worked with a lot of, you know, uh, you know, like of your favorite actors, you know, Will and the other, Will Ferrell, Galifianakis, but this time you bring in, you know, Loja and Atherton. What was it like working with those guys? And did they get 
what you guys were doing? I mean, Will gets it, as Galifianakis gets it, but does William Atherton get it? I think in the context of the scenes that they're in, they yeah, get it. yeah, because we wrote, those scenes are really meant to be those kind of like a, a reference to that kind of film. Um, and beyond that, I don't really know. I think that they appreciate that we're trying to do a really weird, crazy little thing. They're they're great. They know this was a comedy, but we wanted them to act in you know very dramatic, scary way. Yeah. yeah. Pros. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah. It's really fun getting to work with those guys, and we, we all went to dinner one night after after getting done, and, and just had, got to talk to William Atherton about his experience uh, all in the yeah. business for. Years what was he in, like, he was in like an early Spielberg movie? He was in like Amblin or no, the Sugarland Express. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he's got lots of uh, Steve, Stevie stories. Yeah. Right? A lot of first name okay. basis stories. Yeah, <laughs> All right, man, I have like a million more. Um, will we get another, will we get more of the awesome show or what's going what's, what's to happen with you guys? Are you going to do another movie? Is it based on this movie? What's going to happen? Well, the awesome show is, as that show exists, is over. But yeah. We're making more Steve Brule shows. Okay. And uh, we'll still, I think we'll still always do stuff with Adult Swim, whether it's like specials and offshoots of, of Awesome Show. And, you know, we're hoping that this movie does uh, well enough that it allows us to make another one. We'd love to make another movie and, and uh, continue this tradition. Of her. And I'm going to sneak in one quick one because I, I, it got tweeted. They wanted to know, you know, was there, I mean, obviously none of, besides like, you know, a couple of the guys, there's no Awesome Show characters. You know that you guys do. Was there? Did you guys ever write any of those people into the movie? We were going to see spaghetti, or you know, uh, you know. Make it a unique experience where if you didn't know the awesome show, you would appreciate the movie. Yeah. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks. <laughs>